The views and opinions expressed on any programme are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the programme and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Well, hello. Welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm Chip. And I'm CJ. And it is Friday in the Riv. The day before uh, Halloween. After a hectic day before Halloween and four days before the big day, the election. That's right. That's so, right. That's it. So have, let's start you off mailed, with. Yep. If you haven't mailed your ballot in yet, drop it off at City Hall because if you mail it now, it's not going to make it into the election. So now yeah. we'll go with Commander. We'll, now we'll go with Commander COVID. Oh yeah, we got a lot of Commander COVID information today. Let, yeah. Let's do it, Commander. Total cases one hundred and fifty one thousand seven hundred forty one. New cases one thousand two hundred and forty three. Total deaths is nine thousand seven hundred twenty seven. New deaths was twenty seven. Bristol County is twelve thousand three hundred and thirty eight. Now here's uh, Fall River had forty two new cases. Is a COVID. We still remain at 30, uh, 136 fatalities. But when you think about this, in two days, in two days, we've had, um, what is this, 76 new cases in two days. You think we're in the red zone? I think oh. we're in the red zone. And believe it or not, this whole area is in the red zone except for Rehoboth. Rehoboth is still in the yellow zone. So we've got to do something here. But even though we're in the red zone, even though we're in the red zone, people can do things. But uh, before we get off on to anything else, I received a phone call yesterday from Mr. Marciello, uh, who was the potential city administrator, who withdrew his uh, consider withdrew his name from consideration. Mr. Marciello called saying that I slandered and um, was libeling his name. And I want to make it perfectly clear what happened. I received from an outside source a disbarment letter or a disbarment case record. That disbarment case record had the name Marcello, not Marciello. And it was mistaken to be Marciello. I sent that to the mayor. And the mayor obviously brought it to the attention of Mr. Marciello. We had no, there was no malice and there was no intent to defame or make anything out of this from Mr. Marciello. We were just doing what every citizen in Fall River would do, and they're looking out for their cities. Okay, that the mayor felt that a mistake couldn't happen really is amazing that he's going to run like that. I can understand that he wants to protect his potential candidate for city administrator, but you know. Mr. Marciello was not slandered or libel. There was no malice, and there was no malice of forethought. So, and there was no financial damages to Mr. Marciello. But again, I did send that to the mayor, and it was a mistake. After reading it further, we found that it was not did not refer to Mr. Marciello. And we found out that the gentleman that it referred to was admitted to the bar a year before Mr. Marciello. And that, that's what takes a little bit of, you know, investigation. But to be sure, I wanted to be sure, there was no intent of slandering Mr. Marciello, and we did not publish this. It was not published, and we didn't speak about it on the show until this moment. It wasn't spoken about on the show until this moment because we could not confirm the information because we make sure we don't publish it. But I would share it with a, the city council or the mayor just to be a citizen to protect the rights of the citizens. But Mr. Marciello met the resistance from the city council long before uh, the mayor ever got that uh, docket. So I'm sorry if Mr. Marciello felt slandered. I, I'm sorry if he felt libeled. But again, that wasn't our intent. And nobody knew about that until right this moment. Nobody knew about this. And this is why it should have remained quiet. But the mayor had to make sure that he wanted to embarrass me. 
and he didn't embarrass me. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're showing you you're showing how childish you can be. Well, CJ, let me just just quickly before we get into the COVID, um, because when you were informed of that, it was very close to the city council meeting. I, so fundamentally, what you're saying is that you sent that for informational purposes to these people uh, because you felt that a candidate uh, they should be, they should be doing it. I mean, as you said, maybe the mayor should have. Uh, so obviously, he told them about it, and then when he said it wasn't him, uh, the, the rest is you know. Uh, it, but you, there are also other things that that could have been sent there that were far more damaging than that, uh, because I believe you have some Facebook things about uh, you know handyman, you know ads to be a handyman and there's some other personal, very personal things that were in on a Facebook page. Um, so uh, we got to put it in context, but I think the bottom line with this is because I didn't even see it till after it went to the council. And, and the, but the fact is, I think, I think that the, the, the salient point here is that there was no way he was going to be appointed as you said, the city council was pretty, you know, was pretty, was pretty well, uh, had in a majority opinion that they did not want to hire him. Uh, and they were not happy with some of the, uh, the vetting that they did with the, with the interviews, which are far more important, as you know, regardless of what a candidate, uh, candidate's resume says or doesn't say, uh, most of the time it comes down to a, you know, a one-on-one -on -one interview with a personnel director or, or in this case, some city councilors. And I just want to say for the record that I talked to some city councilors about that process and they were not happy at all with the answers they received. And as a matter of fact, I believe that uh, Mr. Masiello even said that uh, he was he was kind of offended by the scrutiny that he was put under by some of the city councilors. And he has every right to be uh, upset. But I think that the city councilors who did ask him those questions were 100 percent correct in doing that. They're doing their job. And so this is this is, as the Bard once said, much to do about nothing. Exactly. Exactly. And, and the thing is, is that you know, Mr. Marciello became a public figure as soon as he put his name into the running for the city administrator position. And he has to expect to be scrutinized. And people are going to be looking. Mistakes do happen. But the information we found about his previous jobs and his previous reviews had been reported by numerous news outlets. And that came out. Now, when you mentioned the, the handyman thing, I checked this out. Um, he owns a company called American Eagle Enterprises, LLC. I, and I, I'm looking at the post directly from him. It says David Marciello, and he posted it in Rehoboth Talk. When I check the LLC filing, it has Mr. Marciello's name and address. So obviously, Mr. Marciello has other businesses that he's involved in, and that's great. I, you know, I'm glad that he's uh, you know, a great entrepreneur. But again, Fall River needs a full-time city administrator. And we need somebody who's going to communicate with the city council, communicate with the people, communicate with the department heads, which, according to news reports in other papers, Mr. Marciello had a problem, according to his former employers, with his communication skills. And that's, you know, that's fine. Some people just don't have good communication skills. But, you well, know, again, well, much to do about nothing in. Again, all of this would have remained quiet, okay, but the mayor had to make sure that he shoved everything in somebody's face. And don't well, call me, Mr. Mayor, and talk off the record because it's not going to happen, okay? It's not going to happen. Well, let me let me add this. In my conversation with some city councilors, the mayor did the same thing to those councilors. He was very upset with their line of questioning. And I know one particular councilor um, who basically – went through the trouble of calling all these communities and asked very appropriate questions. And the mayor was upset. So, you know, I've said since the beginning, 
I want to know who this guy's godfather is because the mayor is really, really upset that this guy didn't get a job. And to call city councilors and fundamentally give them some trouble about what, how they treated him. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Mr. Marciello, you should be happy you didn't get this job because if you're that thin-skinned and you are going to be the city administrator of the city of Fall River, go back and look at what happened to Kathy Ann Viveris at a few meetings. And what's happened to all city administrators at one point in time. And that line of crap that they pulled and someone said in the administration that, oh, that was only because she worked for Jaisal and the city council didn't like Jaisal. I'm going to tell you something. You were hiding in the school department your whole career. Let me tell you something. I've been watching that council for 40 years. I've been going before that council for 40 years. I've been dealing with city administrators for 40 years. And every single city administrator got eviscerated at one time or another. Whether it was Alan Silva or Bob Connors or Jim Smith, because I personally took Bob Connors, who's a good friend of mine, on the health care issue. When we won the grievance, I went before that council, which was packed with city employees, and I fundamentally crucified him and the city. So if you got a thin skin, you shouldn't be in the game. And Mr. Marciello would have not fared well in Fall River. If he can't handle it in Rehoboth or Millbury, forget about it. You, they did you a favor. And that, Fall that's River. Fall River is a deadly place. <laughs> we we don't take part to the Fall River. It's a blood sport. That's and, right. Obviously, as you said, he has problems with communicating. He got low grades in that, and and he gets obviously he gets upset uh, when he's criticized. So it's you know uh, you're in the wrong place if you're going to come to the Riv. You better have you better have a flak jacket and a helmet on because that that's, comes with the territory. That's for sure. That's for sure. Um, but hey, uh, while we're talking about you know the mayor and and his appointees and whatnot. The, you know, the mayor has gone around saying that we need to t put on masks and gloves and wash hands and, you know, social distancing. But did the mayor do that? The mayor had a cocktail party at Pier 52 on Wednesday, getting 250 bucks a head. I can't wait to see the OCPF report on that because I want to find out how many people were there and how much money he actually raised because it's going to be interesting. And I don't want to hear... Because I've already been told by somebody, well, the mayor didn't put that on. I don't want to hear that. It's got the mayor's name on it. It's his. That money goes to the mayor's campaign. Therefore, it's his. We are going to scrutinize every campaign finance report, and we do it every year. So this is nothing new. And we will find out where, where the money's coming from. Because what do we always say on this show? Follow the money. And that's the way it is. Well, what really kind of disturbs me is the fact that, as you said, I don't know who gave, I don't know who put that party on, um, but whoever it is, obviously, is a supporter of the mayor, and, and that's fine. Um, but what disturbs me is, as you said, it's the mayor. It's got the mayor's name on it. I think the mayor should have uh, gracefully put that off, because didn't the mayor tell the DAVs and veterans organizations that they couldn't have any kind of functions because of the well, being in the red zone? Let's, let's make this perfectly clear. He did not tell them directly that he couldn't do that. He said that in an interview with WSAR that we should not have parties and whatnot. The, the Post 464 decided on their own, as the, their board members decided, that they were not going to have a party and they were going to plan for a Christmas party instead, and hopefully they'll be able to have that. But they were acting upon the recommendations of the mayor. And those recommendations of the mayor, but the mayor doesn't have to follow them, I guess. While I'm still on the mayor, tonight's movie at the Durfee High School has been canceled or postponed indefinitely uh, because of the weather. So we can thank the mayor and recreation for trying, but uh, it has been postponed indefinitely. So if you planned on going, don't bother. The weather has uh, kind of beat you up. Well, hey, it is what it is. But uh, as you said, uh, the 
we very rarely get a directive. We don't have Gina Raimondo as the mayor, you know, or or Gretchen Whitmer, who who just uh, it's always a suggestion. But then again, sometimes there has to be a a an actual mandate. I mean, that's what leaders have to do. Sometimes so you don't like to. You like to have everybody do what they should, but. Uh, when you move into a red zone, sometimes maybe a, a little bit more decisive uh, action is required by the by the leaders uh, in order to attempt to bring it under control. Not that, as I said, I don't believe that, uh, you know, people listen. I think we've proven that beyond a shadow of a doubt. However, you still got to make the effort. And Ramondo now, speaking of that, we go over to our friend Gina over in the bordering state. Uh, Gina, I heard this morning, I don't know if you did, CJ, but Gina has basically said that she's given out enough warnings. Now she's sending out the Gestapo uh, and she, they're just going to start issuing fines. She's tired of telling these people, uh, you know, not to, to, to follow the directives. And now she's basically said uh, that, look, uh, that we're going to be out, we're going to be out and about looking for for uh, people that are violating the mandates, which whether they're constitutional or not is a, is a, is a story and a debate for another day. But she is, she has basically said that they're going to be starting to find people this weekend, I guess, for Halloween. So, but remember, if you do have anything for Halloween, try to Try to uh, keep it safe and, and keep your distance. And and keep it small. Keep it small. Like, only have your family, your immediate family members, uh, you know, especially if you're going to go out trick-or-treating, although it's going to be cold tomorrow, but it's cold every Halloween. Um, but keep it small and keep it safe. That's what the important thing is. But, you know, maybe these politicians in general should understand that you can't be telling people, don't do this, and then you turn around and do it. You just can't yeah. do that. Well, that's true. Uh, but then again, remember what politicians, that's their credo. Do as I say, not as I do. Nancy Pelosi, you know, all these other people, uh, they they do whatever they want. Wasn't wasn't uh, when, when Whitmer basically locked down everybody and, and demanded that they stay home and didn't go out into public, wasn't her husband planning a, a yacht party or something on his boat? Wasn't yeah. that discovered? Yeah. So that's the that's the problem with politicians. It's whether it's a political uh, fundraising event or going to the hairdressers or having a party on your boat when you have everybody else locked down. Therein lies the problem with me. Nobody they don't care. It's do as I do as I say, not as I do. And that's that's where we have problems, I think, with the people. People are just getting they're really getting fed up with this stuff. And it doesn't work because they can say it and thank heavens in four days, we won't be seeing these. Every time I turn on my television, there's a political commercial. And I haven't seen that politician's face since the last election. <laughs> and that's what disturbs me. You never see these people. They disappear till the next election. Now they're, they're told about all the great things they've done and Blah 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 blah, but but you look and it's that's going to be over. So there is a silver lining in every dark cloud, but you know when you look at this, it didn't work. It's not. It didn't work in Europe. Some of these countries had far more stringent lockdowns than we did, and now they're having a spike that's exceeding America's spike, statistically. So what does it prove? It proves that you're going to have to lock them up forever. To keep the so this is why it's all BS when they said, Oh, they're waving away. No, you gotta find a vaccine, you gotta find a therapeutic, you gotta find a treatment that works for this stuff because people just don't listen. They lock down Europe solid in many countries. Then as soon as they lifted the lockdowns, everybody started uh passing out the, the virus again. They were out there doing what they weren't supposed to do. And it's the problem is not we don't know how to minimize the spread. It's that we don't behave properly to minimize the spread. True. Yeah. So. True. Makes for an interesting time. 
I'll tell you it now. Is. It does. But we got to, we got all the time. Let's let you want to shift over to a little about on, uh, national stuff with the election coming. Boy, there's a the lot of coming pretty fast. And you know, the it, thing is, is that the polls are showing Biden. And, and, it, and there's all kinds of, all kinds of things. I just looked at an article today about they found two guys fishing in the, in the drop boxes for the ballots, the fishing out ballots. And uh, there's, there's thousands of ballots missing in Pennsylvania that were mailed out and, and in another state too. Uh, it, it's it's like a three ring circus. This this election is going to be an absolute uh, circus with ballots in some states. You it can come in as many as I don't know how uh, you know ten days or eight days after the election. It's still going to be counted as long as it's postmarked. And I mean, this is like a it, it's a horror show. And I'm going to tell you. What's more important is, is, as important as the presidential election is, there are a lot of, if you're, a, if you're a politics watcher, to me, there are a lot of seats in Congress and in the Senate that are razor thin. These, these things are razor thin. And the Hollywood elite and the multimillionaires from the left have poured millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. I think the one against Lindsey Graham, I think he I think that they gave him over a hundred million dollars to run against Lindsey Graham. A hundred million dollars for a Senate seat in a state that they don't live in. So I mean it's pretty uh, it's pretty apparent that there's 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 a real real attempt now, more so than I've ever seen, to not only just win particular things, but basically take over the entire government from top to bottom. Oh yeah, there's no question about it, and we're seeing it all the time. And when you're looking at the fact that the press um, blocks a lot of report, then they don't report on things. Like, how much information has anyone really heard from the mainstream press about the Hunter Biden computer? We had one little blurb, and that was it. We haven't heard anything else about it. And Facebook and Twitter and Google is sifting out all of that stuff. It's almost like communist Russia where you can't say anything. It's becoming, even our press, our newspapers are becoming Pravda, and we can't get any true information. And this is what's causing the problem. I mean, you're looking at polls, and polls are saying that Biden's up by, you know, six over here and five over there, and and and, they're, and they're, while they're doing that, they're slamming the the president. They can slam the president all they want on COVID. Guess what? The president had nothing to do with COVID. That had absolutely nothing to do with COVID. And they need to understand that. And until they understand that, they're not going to know what's going on. And this is the problem. Well, you're right, but the media is so biased. Did you see? I have to bring this. I have to bring this one up because the, the Girl Scouts of America posted uh, a post, and it's, it talked about they had the five women that have been appointed to the Supreme Court. And he basically congratulated, uh, you know, recognized Amy Coney Barrett's appointment to the Supreme Court of the United States. They received so much flack from the left, uh, from the from the left wing, that they actually not only they said it wasn't political. It was just an acknowledgement of her appointment. But then they actually, you know, they they apologized for putting it up and said they, they didn't have anything. They didn't want to put anything up that was construed as being political. Yet all of a sudden they looked back at the Girl Scouts and they basically had a full page ad for Hillary Clinton. And a few other left, you know, liberals. So. You know, the problem with that is, and I don't care who, I don't care whether you're a liberal or conservative, I don't believe in those labels anyway, because I believe that liberals about, that conservatives are liberal about what they want, and conservative about what they got, and liberals are liberal about what they want, and they're conservative about what they already have. Try to take something away from a liberal, he'll immediately become a conservative, you know, he or she. But 
the th but the problem is we are actually allowing only one one group to have free speech nobody else can have free speech in this country if you're a conservative or you have an idea that deviates from the mainstream left wing of of the democratic party and the media you can lose your job you can you you know your life is ruined you, you're blocked you can't get full, and you know americans have a right to every both sides and it's it's no longer we are getting inching closer and closer to becoming like russia and china because if you go to russia and china their media will not put anything on the air that's not cleared by the ruling party correct that's that way in the United States. And that's a scary, scary proposition. Mm. We're getting there, that's for sure. We're I think we're there. there. We're there. Well, 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 you know, when you look at when you look at the city council, you you, you see it there too. I mean, it comes down to fisticuffs in some cases. Yeah. <laughs> Well, like I said, yeah, can you imagine this guy being a city administrator at city council? We've had a couple of near fights. Uh, you know, the you know, the the, the uh, president of city council needs a whip and a chair, not a gavel, to keep everybody in line. That's it. But uh it but that's it. It's crazy. And you know, the, the thing that the really, really uh, I'm worried about is that this is not gonna end in four days. This, I'm afraid this, of that too. And it's going to get worse either way, because if Biden wins, you're going to see you're going to see it may take a little longer. But you're going to see the people if he gets in and he begins to actually implement those policies to take away rights from the people, you're going to have a lot of the people in this nation that are going to revolt. And if Trump gets in, <laughs> forget it. It's going to it's going to the chaos that's going on now is going to pale by comparison to what happened. And it's it's and it's not really about politics. Look what happened in Philly. Somebody walking down the street with a brand new washing machine on a dolly had nothing to do with something that happened 10 miles away. Right. And you know, looting and, and killing people and beating people who have a different opinion. That's what happens in third world countries. That's what happens in in Ilhan Omar's former country in Somalia. That's why she's here causing trouble. Because if she did that in Somalia, she'd be dead. And the reality is that this this country is getting to the point where, where it's like a third world country. There, there's there's violence in the streets. Uh, there's no control. Police officers can't police because. Even if they do their job, they're condemned. Like the guy, what happened in Philly? The guy was coming at him with a knife, and they go, "Yeah, but they told him, they told him he was he was crazy." Yeah, that doesn't make any difference. He's coming at you with a knife. Does anybody remember what happened in Warwick when that got when that teacher got killed trying to protect the people in that in that uh, uh, that restaurant because yeah. someone was wielding a knife, a crazy person? So you expect the police that would to be stabbed? And now the police are under scrutiny. You, you can't even they we can't they can't defend themselves for God's sakes. And it, it's it's crazy. The society is upside down. And no matter what somebody else, and Joe Biden, Joe, you know, Joe, why didn't he just shoot him in the leg? Are you a nitwit? Are you a nitwit? They shoot at center mass because that's where they can stop somebody. And secondly, if you try to shoot them in a the leg and you miss, it hits the ground and ricochets and kills somebody else. That's you think exactly. somebody can take a shot like that under pressure? No, but I think I think he thought that that was a Western movie. You know something, Joe? You shouldn't have said shoot him in a leg. You should have said should be like a TV show. He should they should have shot the knife out of his hand. Well, we're out of time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day, and we'll see you on Monday, the day before the election. Stay safe and stay angry. Get your votes.